Welcome to Get the Right Job. I'm Jeff Magnuson. In today's episode, we're going to talk about annual reviews. We'll start with an overview, then we'll talk about how to prepare for them, and finally we'll wrap up with why they should never be a surprise. Now, some of you listening may not have an annual review. Some of you may have already had it. Some of you may have it after the new year, whenever. Every company is different in the way they handle these, but by and large, a lot of companies usually have one formal review at the end of the year, and that's what I just want to focus on today. And I want to start by saying I am not a fan of annual reviews. And the reason why I'm not a fan is because sometimes managers will use these annual reviews to try to sabotage or give negative feedback to employees for the very first time, therefore preventing them from getting a raise or from getting a promotion. This is when they're used in a terrible way. And what we'll talk about in a few minutes is when they're done properly, they should never be a surprise to the employee. If you think about it, your manager should be giving you feedback throughout the year. Ideally, you should be having meetings every two to three weeks to discuss your career progress, projects you're working on, whatever. Just a 30-minute touch base meeting and any feedback, positive or negative, should be given at that time. Therefore, at the end of the year, the annual review is really nothing more than a recap of what you and your manager talked about throughout the year. Because if you think about it, let's say you order something at your house, like you order a couch to be delivered, and the company completely screws it up. They're late, the couch is damaged, it takes weeks to get it replaced, meanwhile you threw out your other couch, and let's say this, you get this done in the summer. Are you really going to wait until December to tell the company about your bad experience? No, of course not. You're going to tell them right away, or at least when the job is done, look, I really didn't think you guys did a great job here. This went wrong, that went wrong, and so on. And of course, vice versa, if it was a positive experience, you would want to share that news to make sure people got acknowledged for doing a great job. This is why annual reviews are kind of not great. Bad managers will use them to try to stuff a full year's worth of feedback into one meeting, very often held in December. So as an employee, these reviews are actually a great way for you to assess your manager and your company and how they are treating you, because these should never be a surprise. And again, we'll get to that in just a second. So let's say you have a, uh, an annual review coming up next week. How do you prepare for it? What do you want to do? And for some of you, you may have had to start to prepare or write your own months ago. For some of you, you may never have had to do this yet, and this might be the first time. What you want to do is take the time to go back through your year and detail your accomplishments and your achievements. And these could be anything. These could be small things. Maybe you helped out somebody in a different department and they were really under the gun and you stopped what you were doing to give them a hand. Put it down. Anything like that. It doesn't have to be big, visible projects that you were part of or that you led. Anything that you helped improve your company, your department, your manager's life, a colleague's life, a work situation, a fire drill, whatever it was. And go back through your emails, go back through your calendar to refresh your memory. And then next year, keep track of these wins as the year goes on because then you won't have to do this exercise. It'll all be documented in one place. If you just take a few seconds after each win or after each accomplishment that you have just to keep it in one file, it will make the end of the year much easier on you. And as a bonus, it also helps when you're ready to update your resume, which you should be doing every six months because you can refer to that same document. In addition to your projects uh, and goals and things like that that you achieved, what skills did you either learn or get better at? Did you meet or work with anybody new? Anything that you can discuss that made you a better employee, that helped you grow professionally even a little bit. And the other thing you want to focus on is where do you want to improve? Everybody can get better somewhere. I'm not suggesting you did something awful and you need to get a lot better very quickly. If that's the case, obviously mention that as well because your manager probably will. 
But anything that you want to get better at, maybe it's a software skill, maybe if it's presenting to people, maybe it's leading a project, maybe you haven't had a chance to do that. Put it down, talk about it. That's at least use these annual reviews to set a framework for next year. That way you can use them to your advantage. And finally, just to wrap up this short episode, as I mentioned, the most important thing is that these should never be a surprise. Good managers will communicate with you throughout the year, but I don't want to put all of it on the manager. It's your career. It's also your job to actively manage your career and make sure you're being challenged with the right work. And if your manager isn't keeping up with one-on-one meetings with you, then make sure that you speak to him or her about it and say, hey, I really want to try to be consistent with these things. And if, you, if neither of you can peel yourself away from your computers, then try to do it when we're back in the office. Go out for coffee, take a walk, just get away so you find the time. Because every time you speak to him or her and you start talking about your career, it's only going to benefit you. And when you have these meetings and you're getting feedback in real time, again, when these annual reviews come around, you're keeping track of everything. So they're easy for you to remember, first of all. They're easy for your manager to help write or discuss with you. And most importantly, they are not a surprise. They are simply a formalized version of everything you discuss during the year. Now it's documented and now you can move on. And that's the right way they should be handled. They should be non-events. And if they're non-events, that's the sign of a healthy manager, a healthy relationship, and likely a healthy culture. If you are surprised during your annual review, that is a bad sign. That's a sign that either you were not having these one-on-one meetings, you were not getting the proper feedback, you were misreading the signals of feedback that maybe was trying to be given to you, But the point is you need to take a step back and assess what is going on there. The end of the year, again, it should be a recap. You should really not be learning anything new except maybe what your promotion will be or maybe a bump up in salary. Anything else should be very routine and expected. So use the annual reviews to assess your standing at the company to make sure that that's a place that you want to be going forward. And that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any topics that you want me to cover, if you have any questions, if you want to work with me or get a consultation, please visit my website, jeffmagnusonconsulting.com. There are also links to all my social pages there. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you at the next episode.